What is in the air that we can't see and how can we capture it? Traces of environmental DNA or eDNA released from organisms into their environment, such as water, glaciers, soil, or air, are increasingly used to classify species and community assemblages. How can we filter air to collect high quality airborne environmental DNA directly from the atmosphere efficiently at scale? Can we use a light aircraft? These questions are the confluence of decades of multidisciplinary expertise in parallel, life sciences and aviation. My name is Kimberly Metris. I hold a PhD in genetics and I'm a commercially rated pilot and flight instructor. My research centers around atmospheric biology otherwise called aerobiology. One day I was flying skydivers to 12,500 feet in a Saharan dust plume. And while I was up there, a light bulb went off. I knew there was genetic information at altitude. I could see it, like when a beam of light shines into your window and illuminates the dust particles. But I needed a tool to measure it that would be up to rigorous standards and enable precise control when sampling. But what was envisioned did not exist. So we got to work designing a probe to be attached to an airplane to create it ourselves. Our goal was to sample bioaerosols, airborne collections of genetic material by aircraft directly from the atmosphere at multiple altitudes over major aerosolization sources. We look for bacteria, plant, and vertebrate DNA using metabarcoding markers to demonstrate the operability of our system and to test the hypothesis that organismal DNA is present and detectable thousands of meters into the planetary boundary layer. So we designed a probe and supporting system to collect DNA from air that can be mounted on an aircraft so we could sample at low and high altitude. Capturing nucleic acids from the atmosphere faces similar challenges as capturing them from water, including low biomass presence and contamination. For example, Air intakes on the fuselage of aircraft are difficult to guard from contaminants, either from aircraft surfaces or chemicals from flight operations. We chose to mount our probe on the wing strut so the forward-facing mast only samples free stream air forward of the leading edge. We had specific exacting requirements that we needed from our sampling probe to ensure the system fit our purpose and that we would have high confidence in the data. Using a light aircraft as our research platform presents advantages such as lower fuel burn and incredibly lower operating costs compared to larger aircraft. Our pump-driven system does not rely on ram air, so it is efficient at slow air speeds or stationary ground or flight regimes, such as a hovering helicopter or a UAV. Our probe had to be lightweight, which makes it suited for extreme environments. And although light aircraft are suboptimal for sampling altitudes beyond service ceilings of about 20,000 feet, they can probe the entire depth of the planetary boundary layer, that part of the atmosphere closest to Earth's surface. What we wanted to do and accomplished was to design a robust, sterilizable probe and supporting system for capturing airborne nucleic acids, featuring active full flow filtration of a quantifiable, controllable volume of air and a high integrity chamber to protect the sample from loss or contamination. We also introduce aerial mapping of DNA from species of interest in the air and contributed a flight pattern to do this in a scalable manner from light aircraft. Our novel airborne environmental DNA survey tool detected previously unreported species in the air. Data from our device revealed that the atmosphere contains a lot of untapped genetic information and that there's atmospheric mixing with terrestrial or ground associated sources, such as human mediated agriculture and industry. Additionally, our study shows that we can aerially map DNA in the atmosphere and reveals what DNA in the air represents and looks like in terms of ground level emissions and biodiversity. DNA from ground level activities is detectable. What is surprising is the discovery that everything is not everywhere. Aerosolization efficacy is important to the fate and composition of what we find up at high altitude. There's a lot more than you might think floating around in the ocean of air that we breathe. Any strong force that lifts air, water, or soil up into the atmosphere, like a thunderstorm or updrafts and downdrafts, is likely a transporter for DNA. Based on our findings, 
we recommend that the scientific community consider indices of lift and air mass characteristics in their atmospheric biology surveys to better understand the fate of ARE DNA. Our sampling probe has successfully captured airborne bacteria, plant, and vertebrate DNA assemblages through air masses sampled at different altitudes. However, finer scale resolution may require weekly or daily sampling over an extended period, which is why we designed the technology and method to be cost-effective for longer-term monitoring efforts. Future investigations will benefit from frequent and sustained sampling, as changes in the air biome may be rapid and substantial. This is the air we breathe, which carries human, animal, and plant crop pathogens. There's unlimited potential for mapping these data, with purposes ranging from allergen and pathogen monitoring, to biodefense applications, and bioprospecting culturable airborne bacteria for industrial applications. The study of airborne environmental DNA is a relatively new field compared to other substrates like water and soil. However, our study opens the door to exciting discoveries in atmospheric biology. To improve our ability to identify the biodiversity present in the air, there is a need to expand genetic markers and reference databases. From our perspective, we would like to expand our sampling efforts and collaborate with other researchers. We love to fly and collect information people would find useful. Get in touch with us.